Every normal heart has a specific electrical conduction system that consists of SA node, AV node, internodal fibers that connect SA node to AV node, bundle of his right and left bundle branches, and Purkinje fibers that are distributed throughout the subendocardial area. Left bundle branch block, also known as LBBB, is a kind of conduction system abnormality. It happens when the electrical impulse cannot normally travel down the left bundle branch. This condition negatively affects ventricular contraction and causes the left ventricle to depolarize later than it normally would. Note that, the best tool to identify any type of conduction abnormalities including LBBB, is surface electrocardiogram. In surface electrocardiogram, QRS complexes represent ventricular activation. Thereby, any abnormal impulse conduction through the ventricles mainly affects QRS complex morphology. There are three major electrocardiographic criteria for diagnosing LBBB. The first one is widening of QRS complex. Remember that the hallmark of any intraventricular conduction system abnormality is QRS widening. Broad QRS complex is defined as QRS duration equal to or greater than 2.5 small boxes. The second criterion is the presence of dominant S wave in lead V1. Thereby, the QRS complexes may have either RS or QS pattern in V1. The third criterion is the presence of slurred or notched or wave in lateral leads. Slurred or wave is defined as our peak time greater than 60 milliseconds in lateral leads. In addition to the diagnostic triad of LBBB, there are a couple of associated findings in left bundle branch block as well. Absent septal Q wave and lateral leads and secondary discordant ST segment and T wave changes are two very common associated findings in LBBB. For more information about secondary ST T wave changes, tap the link in right upper corner. Unlike RBBB, left bundle branch block is usually a marker of organic heart disease. Chronic hypertension, valvular heart disease, coronary artery disease, heart failure and cardiomyopathy are four main causes of left bundle branch block. Thereby, careful history, physical examination, and more advanced evaluation with echocardiography are required in patients with left bundle branch block. Left bundle branch block does not cause symptoms by itself. Depending on the underlying cardiac disease, signs and symptoms can be different patient to patient. For example, heart failure causes shortness of breath and fatigue, while ischemic heart disease may cause exertional chest discomfort. Let's go through several examples. This is our first example for you. Before going through it together, pause the video and interpret the EKG on your own, then play the video again and compare your answer with the correct one. As you see, the duration of QRS complexes is about 3.5 small squares. There is QS pattern in V1, with slurred or wave in V6. Thereby, this strip is demonstrating typical left bundle branch block. As you see, absent septal Q wave, discordant ST segment elevations in V1 to V4, and discordant ST depressions in inferior and lateral leads, are thanks to LBBB as well. Here is the next example for you. What do you think about the strip? Is it LBBB or not? As it is obvious, the duration of QRS complexes is three small squares. The complexes exhibit QS pattern in V1. Our peak time in lateral leads is about 80 milliseconds that favors slurred or wave. So, the QRS complex changes are due to typical LBBB. Here is one more example for you. What is your idea about this strip? Is it LBBB or not? The QRS interval is about two small boxes. So, the complexes are narrow and no intraventricular conduction abnormality is present. Note that, the hallmark of any kind of ventricular conduction abnormality is QRS widening. Therefore, isolated QS pattern in V1 does not suffice to make the diagnosis of LBBB. Meanwhile, widespread STT wave changes are possibly due to underlying ischemia. Before going through the last challenging example, 
If you have enjoyed the video so far, please subscribe me and ring the bell. Here is the last example for you. What do you think about the strip? Are the QRS changes secondary to LBBB or not? QRS interval greater than 2.5 mm, in association with deep S wave and V1, slurred or wave and lateral leads, and loss of septal Q wave and discordant STT wave changes, are all in favor of typical LBBB. But that's wrong. On closer inspection, there are prominent delta waves in limb leads that establish WPW pattern. So, all that glitters is not gold. It's essential to know that, there are several conditions which may be mistaken for left bundle branch block. WPW pattern, ventricular rhythms, and pacemaker rhythms are frequently mistaken for LBBB. We will talk about differential diagnosis of LBBB in next videos. By the way, if you want to get more familiar with secondary STT changes due to left bundle branch block, watch these two videos. Have fun!